Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're going to be doing another little round of work on the 34 sedan delivery. Uh, last time we got the engine uh, all swapped in and uh, starting to look pretty cool, starting to put some of our little old doodads on it, which is one of our favorite things to do, and also getting it closer to running. Uh, the big thing we need to tackle on this today is uh, swapping out the gas tank. The gas tank that is in it may be okay, we're not sure, but we got a brand new tank with the car, so we might as well put it in. And, uh, and then we're also gonna kind of finish up buttoning anything up, run a new fuel line, all those little odds and ends. And hopefully by the end of this video, we can fire this thing on straight headers oh, 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 and, uh, and see if it, what it sounds like. It'll be a lot of fun if we can get it to run and uh, hear it uh, sounding good today. So let's get started. All right, so the tank that this came with actually says it's a 35 to 37 pickup and 33, 34 Victoria, which I didn't realize had a different tank. Apparently it does and maybe uses the same tank, we're hoping. So, but it's a nice Bob Drake tank. I don't know if they still even make this tank or not, but. Oh yeah, look where the, the next, filler neck is there. Yeah. Totally different, so. Yeah. That little detail there is definitely uh, necessary, so. We will uh, put this thing up in the air and check out the old gas tank and start swapping them out. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, Yikes. this gas tank is... <laughs> Definitely a problem. This, okay. Yeah, this one is, I guess, is Swiss cheese at this point. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been smelling it and it's been dripping goopy. You can see here, this like sticky uh, remnants of fuel. Not great, so we need to, uh, we need to address that. So we're gonna get the tank pulled out. We also have these sequamps that are in here that we need to put some little blocks on the pads for the spring. Um, we hadn't done that yet, and we figured this time when we get it up in the air, we will take care of that. So that's also on my list to do while we get the tank out. There, now we got it. Hey, here we go. I think I'm good, thanks. with everything now. One down. All right, so apologize for the crappy light, but this project turned into a kind of a big ordeal. So <laughs> because it's a sedan delivery and the gas tank is actually in that rear door opening wood, which we're pretty sure was put in when the car was off the frame. And, and there's some brackets we can't get to. So we're gonna start pulling the wood floor up because we, at least we can get to these screws. These little flathead screws are incredibly hard to get out, but if you're very careful, they do come out. You can see we got this board here is loose and we're able to, it's kind of like a, sort of tongue and groove, I don't know what the Right, I, I'm not sure what you would it's call it. Flanged, I don't, I'm not a carpenter. Flanged, I don't know. there you go, we'll call it flanged. Flanged, some sort of one-sided tongue and groove. But this is like a boxed in area of wood here and I got this board up and there's like ancient newspaper in here. Kind of scared to stick my hand in there. Yeah. But it looks like the typical deal, I think some mousies made a nest in there. And there was all sorts of stuff. Either that or when they were building this thing, they just threw all kinds of crap in. But I'm gonna guess it's a mousey. So we're gonna start pulling these boards out. 
We may have to pull that wooden cross rail to get the gas tank out, but I'm pretty sure this is why Warren didn't go any further with it. He probably realized when he was looking at the tank that it was a major, major ordeal and just said, ah, screw it, and parked it in the garage and just looked at it. So we're gonna, we're determined to get it on the road, so we gotta get all this out. So we're gonna try and carefully get these planks out with as many screws as we can, and then we'll, uh, we'll see if we can sneak that gas tank out from the top and uh, yeah, and then clean everything up. The nice thing is we can at least get to this area that probably hasn't been seen in 90 years and uh, clean anything that looks questionable up and all that good stuff. So that's what we're gonna work on. So I'm gonna be taking flathead screws out for hours. <laughs> So, Steve headed home two hours ago, and now I got out the last, I don't know, six bolts and ten screws. So I, we realized these two outer boards have to come out. Um, there was body mount bolts through here, but because it was through wood, um, these were square drive uh, bolts, which were 5 16 for whatever reason we didn't have a socket for those, a square uh, drive socket. So I had the TIG weld. So nuts to that, um, I think the middle ones I was able to get out, um, they were carriage bolts. And the front ones are carriage bolts, but the right one was spinning, so I had to uh, TIG weld a nut to that and hold it so that we could get everything out. But surprisingly, it all came out. I have pretty much all the screws out, I think, now. Um, the other hard thing was, back in these corners, there's iron brackets, and there was screws with little half-inch nuts on them that you could barely get to, so that was also difficult. So now I'm gonna try and wrestle these last boards out so that we can hopefully get this darn gas tank out. So. All right, after another hour or two, I got the last two boards out. I ended up having to take these side panels out. There was a bunch of hidden screws. Um, unfortunately, there was two hidden screws on this one cross brace here, and I just had to, it, it ended up getting broken or I had to cut it, so I'm gonna have to make a new board for that. That's the only wood that we really broke on the whole thing, believe it or not. Um, but man, this is definitely the body needs, to, is supposed to have come off or they didn't plan it on these things. So I had to bend the metal just a little bit here to slip this out of here. This is crazy how hard this was to get to. So I'm hoping I can get this thing out now. Um, don't jinx myself. And I know this neck unthreads. No oh boy. And it's got old fuel in it. So steep. Shut <laughs> Oh boy, that is terrible old fuel. Okay. Guess I need 
need to see if I can put a pipe wrench on that. Man, what a pain. the worst thing ever in the whole entire planet. Oh my god. Alright, so next morning I got my ass kicked last night. Uh, proceeded to take out like the whole inside of the car and you could see how much like silt and dirt, it's really dark in here I apologize, uh, is built up on this thing. It's crazy. So there's just like piles of it everywhere caked in. So we have a bunch of work to do now just to clean all that up, um, get all of that vacuumed out and blew out and cleaned. And we're gonna, of course, get wire wheel and rust encapsulate anything that we're gonna cover back up so that hopefully we can preserve this thing and it can live for many, many more years without having to be uh, messed with. So that's this part of the project. The other good thing is we were able to get, walk you guys over here. We were able to get the neck out of the old gas tank. So this piece, it's kind of a smart design. It's, it's flanged or flared on this end and then this iron pipe here uh, I didn't realize until we were taking it apart, you're supposed to be able to hit it with a punt, with a chisel. Steve made a good point of that. Um, and I was trying to take it apart with a pipe wrench last night and didn't have the swing. And if I would have been thinking right, I could have hammered that loose and taking this neck out would have definitely helped my situation some, but it is what it is. Got it apart. Now we're gonna try and get it back together and our new tank's here. So after like a day of cleaning, we might be close to putting a gas tank back in. Oh, 
stolen from the guy who did rape. Oh boy. See? Put a two per gallon. Mm -hmm. I just run it. You know. Now we're going to hope this goes in easier than it came out. Okay, well it, it's in. I don't know what the problem was, the thing fell right in. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you take that damn neck out. Exactly. And this edge is bent up. Yeah. Uh, yeah exactly, yeah. it's way easier when someone had to do the hard work first. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're welcome. <laughs> I wonder why this is bent up. You want me to pull it out? I can just knock it flat. I guess it doesn't matter, it's just... Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave this alone. That I bent up a little bit. Yep. And then we're gonna make our... Because I think... If we make our piece of wood before we bend this down again where it's supposed to be... Yep. It'll help it slip in a little easier. Right. Um, so... The wood went on this side of the cross member? It went under the tank here or it went on this side of the cross member? I think originally it went on top of the... Tank. Oh, that's right, because oh, the bolt, the bolt yeah, for it was right here, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yep. So it kind of like, it was like just barely over it right here. Yeah. Like just like this much of it. So. No it, possible way to remove it with it in there. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the only other thing we could do is when we make a new one, but it kind of needs to be big like that to support everything. Yeah. So. Yep. But, yeah, you can see they. All right, so Matt left us for the rest of this video. Yep, and we got the fuel tank and the fuel line in the 34. 
So hopefully in the next video, we have to cut this one short because Carlisle is in three days. Three days. It's Friday afternoon and we leave Monday morning. Exactly, so yeah. So we're not gonna get it finished. Everything is gonna be on hold for two weeks. Yes, so Steve got the fuel line run, the tank is in and bolted down. Um, what else needs to be done to get it running? Uh, mount the coil. Uh, that's pretty much it to get it running. I mean, we don't have the charging system or anything done yet or any of the wiring, but to get it running, just the coil yeah. is all it needs. So I'll take you around back, show you the, the whole entire floor is gone. Uh, Matt and I were talking before he left. I believe he's going to be leaving the floor out for right now. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of rust he needs to fix, correct? Yeah. Where's yeah, that he's at? Gonna, uh, in front of the left wheel well, uh, in uh, between the door and yep. the wheel well down there at the bottom, right on the uh, quarter panel. Yeah. But you can see, I mean, there's still, they took the masonite out. Is that all dust? That's all dust, yeah. Yeah, so there's yep. a little bit of cleaning we need to do back here, but tank is in, fuel line is run. We're going to put a normal Stuart Warner sender in this, correct? Right, yeah. Matt, we just sent the gauge out to get yeah, it's an just, electronic it, conversion. Yep, it's going to be. It's going to be able to use just a standard Stuart Warner uh, sender, so that'll be nice. Cool. And this tank is what a thirty-five to six pickup. They're the same. I forget what Matt said it was. It's interesting that they're threaded. The yeah. filler neck's threaded because yep. the the cars are just a uh, like a slip rubber yeah, joint. Yeah, just slip. Yeah, right. So this is this turned into quite an ordeal. We were hoping just to slide the tank tank in and out, but. <laughs> Here that, we are. That, yeah, that wasn't the case. <laughs> but we took the floor out so we could paint inside. It looks very nice in here now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully next video, Matt will be back. We'll have this thing running. Maybe take it for a, a little bit drive in I and like out. like the sound of that. Still only has rear brakes. So, yeah. the, <laughs> eh. Eh. so thanks guys for watching. Hopefully in the next video you'll hear this bad boy fire up. Catch you later.